Hey everybody, today's question is when should you do a retreatment versus the apico? Do you ever have trouble making this decision? What goes into your decision making? Are you looking at the quality of the endo that's in front of you? Are you looking to see if there's any canal obstructions? Are you using a comb beam to help you with your decision making? And are you evaluating the restorative? So think about it, what are your deciding factors? Well, let me walk you through my thought process. The first thing that I do is I look at the quality of the endo and I try to find out the whole tooth story. Is there a missed canal? Can I tell if the previous operator achieved working length? And I want to know if the rubber dam was used. I like to show people the rubber dam so they really understand what I'm talking about. So when I show them this and ask them if it was used during their treatment, most of the time they tell me no. And the reason why they tell me no is because the root canal was done a long time ago and they just don't think it was created yet. Well, my friends, the rubber dam was invented back in 1864, so there really aren't any excuses. So when I show them the rubber dam and they say that they've never used it, that tells me something. It tells me that the entire root canal could still be infected. And that could be the deciding factor for me on how I treat the tooth. Let's talk about the key differences between an orthograde retreatment and an apicoectomy. A retreatment will treat the entire length of the canal, while the apicoectomy will treat only around the last six millimeters of the canal. So if you suspect that the entire root is contaminated, then a retreatment should be your first choice. And if you suspect a missed canal, then retreatment should definitely be your first choice. I also want to know when the tooth was treated and how many times the tooth has been treated. When I was in dental school, I learned the following. You first do the root canal. If that fails, you retreat it. If that fails, then you retreat it again before you ever go to the apico. If the tooth has had only one root canal, then I will try to retreat that whenever it's possible. I always try to do whatever I can non-surgically first. I've become sort of a retreat adonist. One of the main reasons why I retreat first is simply because, well, I have to be honest here, I just don't trust that the tooth was disinfected properly or that there hasn't been any coronal leakage. So if there is a missed canal, a short obturation, or a not so good looking endo, I retreat any chance I can get, and especially if it's never been retreated before. Apicos were created for a few main reasons. First, because teeth naturally have a lot going on in the apical third. There are times that in the last apical three millimeters, there are a lot of apical ramifications and isthmuses that can get in our way. The natural anatomy can sometimes be really hard to disinfect. So when we do an apico, we resect the tooth at three millimeters because this is the level in which we are likely to remove all those apical ramifications. When we do a retro prep, that extends three millimeters into the canal even further, cleaning it a little bit deeper, and then we seal that with a retro filling. Another great reason to do an apico is if you have an obstruction, like a separated file, or some calcification that prevented you from getting patent. The apico, again, would resect three millimeters of the root, most likely exposing the file, and then your retro prep would likely remove the file and clean the area around where you can then seal the canal properly from the end. Apicos are great and they work really well, but you have to know the right cases to use them because an apical will only achieve disinfection until around the six millimeter level. So if you suspect any coronal leakage or coronal contamination, then the complete contamination will not be addressed and could lead to a future failure like in this picture here. You can see that this patient had a silver point obturation that was likely failing and so the apical was done. Years later, it started to fail and she developed a sinus tract because the entire length of the root was still contaminated. So another apico here was not going to fix this. Instead, I retreated it and her infection went away. Here are a few more cases where some of the apicos had failed. This root canal looks like it was well done, but it was tender to percussion, again, years after the apico. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I knew that I would have retreated the tooth first prior to an apico, so that was going to be my treatment of choice at this point. Now my post-op doesn't look much different. You can't tell much from this x-ray, but if you take an off-angle radiograph, you can actually see that there is an extra canal in that root where the apico was done. You would never be able to see something like this unless you accessed it. 
So sometimes you have to take a peek inside to really know what is the correct treatment. Here is another case that was apicote and was not healing. The comb beam here told us the exact story. There was a missed MB2, so an apico is not going to work long term when there is a missed canal like this. So make sure you know the entire tooth story before you ever dive in. You've got to retreat something like this first. Another reason why people prefer an apico is sometimes for restorative reasons, like in this patient here. I didn't think that an apico is a good long term solution here because it doesn't appear disinfected at all. And since the patient was ready to replace the crown and start over due to the aesthetics, we went with the retreatment. But you have to disassemble the tooth in order to get the job done. So make sure you talk to your patient and let them know their options and the pros and cons of each option. That's what we did here and even though we both felt it was more work on the front end, we knew that it would give him the best result long term, both endodontically and aesthetically. Remember, there are contraindications for both procedures, but specifically for the apico, you need to be careful for those special anatomical structures like the sinus and the mental nerve. And sometimes those second molars can be really tricky because there's too much buccal bone that really makes surgery difficult because of the access to the roots. So don't forget to keep these contraindications in mind. Now, what about this? This patient has a cast post and core in both of the canals but she is asymptomatic and has been asymptomatic for 10 years. You could try to retreat this tooth, but you have to consider that cast post and core when you're treatment planning something like this. You can certainly do an apico, but you can also do nothing. Remember, another option is to do nothing, but don't forget to follow up your patient if this is what you choose. Well, I hope this helps you make your decision making when it comes to retreatments versus apicos. Both are great options to save your natural teeth. Remember, if you want to check out more things like this, check out all the blogs at soniachopradds.com. Talk soon.